So one of the things I'm going to talk about a bit are catecholamines. Now, catecholamines are a grouping of chemo- ne- neurotransmitters, and I'm not going to go into great depth on this because you know then we're getting into a lot of biochemistry and chemistry, but epinephrine, norepinephrine, and dopamine are catecholamines. Now, most of us are aware of cortisol and cortisol effects and somewhat familiar with epinephrine. It's the hormone that really causes your heart to race when, you know, when you're under stress or you have to run away from the tiger, then you get pumped up with epinephrine, which causes, again, the heart to speed up and pump harder and et cetera. Norepinephrine, which is a little bit less understood by the general public, um, causes the blood to be pulled from the center of the body and out to the hands and the brain uh, so that you can run away from the tiger and be ready. You know, that that split second um, ability to respond. And that's largely a norepinephrine function. Now, important to remember is that dopamine is the precursor to both epinephrine and norepinephrine. So if you have excess stress, which would activate epinephrine and norepinephrine release, it will then obviously deplete dopamine. Okay, High stress reduces dopamine levels. And dopamine is the a primary feel-good hormone. It what gives you a joy response. It increases motivation. It's why people play slot machines because they'll get a little dopamine rush. It's why teenagers and some older people are constantly uh, looking to get affirmations on their phone. Oh, they liked my picture. They liked my whatever. Each time that happens, you get a little tiny jolt of dopamine and it makes you feel good and it makes you happy. It also increases motivation. So for example, if I'm talking to someone and they say that they're uh, depressed, I will ask them questions like, are you having negative self-talk Or do you just not want to get off the couch? If they say, I just don't want to get off the couch, that is more likely to be a dopamine deficiency, okay? Because they're not motivated. What's the point? I'm not going to get any joy out of any of my activities anyway. I might as well just lay on the couch and watch TV. At least I get a little jolt of dopamine from watching these TV programs I like, okay? So it's a primary feel-good hormone. Excess stress, again, activating epinephrine and norepinephrine release will deplete dopamine. So excess stress and anxiety then lead to depression and a lack of motivation. And guess what happens? So those lead to a lack of motivation and depression. Well, then guess what happens there? That feeds back into the anxiety. So you get in this row, this, um, closed circuit of depression, anxiety, depression, anxiety. And the immediate cause of that or approximate cause of that is generally the anxiety from the overuse of epinephrine and norepinephrine. Now, I'm going to show a couple studies a little bit later that I didn't get put into the program here, but we will list them before we put this on the on the uh, on the web about the dangers of this catecholamine uh, excess problem. It leads to many, perhaps most of the dangers and bad feelings that go along with menopause. 